Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. First things first, a quick announcement. The Dao Yi website, daoyi.org, has just been launched, along with its YouTube channel and Facebook page. Dao Yi is a non-profit organization aiming to practice, preserve, and promote internal martial art, energy arts, TCM, and any other practices that benefit our community. From now on, Dao Yi will regularly post interviews, articles, and demonstrations contributed by many experts and teachers around the world. Please subscribe to the Dao Yi YouTube channel, follow the Dao Yi Facebook page, and join the Dao Yi Discord for updates. Also, next week's video will be the monthly Q&A. Please post your questions in the comment section or email me if you prefer to be anonymous. My email address is in the description. I will do my best to answer them for you. Just so you know, if a question deserves a dedicated discussion, I will only provide a brief answer in the Q&A video and elaborate on it in a future video. In the last couple of videos, we talked about the first and second stages of Qi Gan practice. Today, we will talk about the third and final stage of the three-stage energy practice method. But first, let's warm up with Dao De Jing commentary and Xiu Dao. Today's topic is Gong Cheng Shi Sui. By the way, some versions of Dao De Jing say Gong Cheng Shen Sui, which means almost the same as Gong Cheng Shi Sui. In the previous chapters, Lao Zi mainly introduced his philosophical concept of sage, individual behavior, the Tao of humans, and the Tao of heaven, and so on. Then, in the 17th chapter, Lao Tzu started introducing how a government should manage its people by following the Wu Wei concept, a key principle of the Great Tao. So, he categorized the way a government administrates its people into four types. He said, quote, Tai Shang. 不知有之,其次亲而遇之,其次未之,其次无之。End quote. Translation. The great rulers, the people do not notice their existence. The lesser ones, they attached to and praise them. The still lesser ones, they fear them. The still lesser ones, they despise them. End translation. So here, Lao Zi praised the one that applied the Wu Wei concept that people did not notice their existence. Then Lao Zi said the reason for being a great ruler, translated code, the great ruler seldom issues orders. At the end of this chapter, Lao Zi said, quote, Gong Cheng Shi Sui, Bai Xing Jie Wei Wo Zi Ran. End quote. Translation When the work was done and the things ran smoothly, the people outside, we have done it ourselves. End translation. In other words, he appears to accomplish everything effortlessly. Everything he does is just a natural occurrence. It is just another way to emphasize the concept of a Wu Wei or non action. The term Gong Cheng Shi Sui actually occurred in the last part of this chapter. Gong means work, achievement, Cheng means success, Sui means complete, finish. Put together, it means that their work was done and their undertakings were successful. 
Now, let's talk about how Xiu Dao practitioners in history applied the term Gong Cheng Shi Sui in energy practice. We all know now that the whole Xiu Dao practice involves simply adjusting the mind to the right level to refine the prenatal energy without using any postnatal effort. Even though different terms have been used in ancient Xiu Dao documents to express the method to refine the three treasures Jing, Qi, Shen, or essence, energy, and spirit. The ultimate solution is to apply the static method, which ensures our body, which includes our physical body as well as our mind, spirit, energy, and all other elements to enter a prenatal state, a state in which the energy and other elements get refined by themselves. In other words, the way to achieve the Gong Cheng Shi Sui state or the accomplish everything state is through Wu Zi Ran or natural occurrence. In practice, it means to accomplish everything without being noticed. A natural approach, a Wu Wei approach, or a static approach. Here, Lao Zi pointed out the reason for having Gong Cheng Shi Sui was Wu Zi Ran, an application of Wu Wei in Xiu Dao practice. To summarize, Lao Zi in this chapter explained the reason for Gong Cheng Shi Sui was Wu Zi Ran, or the reason behind accomplishing everything was letting it happen naturally. With that, let's move on to today's main topic, the final stage of the three stage energy practice method. Lian Shen He Qi, or Train the mind and integrate the qi. Topics covered in today's video include first, review of the first two stages, second, how to practice Lian Shen He Qi, third, important principles of the three stage energy practice method, topic 4, misperception, topic 5, demonstration, and topic 6, takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1 Review of the first two stages. This video introduces the third stage of the three stage energy practice method, a method I created based on decades worth of practice with energy sensation training in martial arts. This method is specifically meant for energy sensation training in martial art practice, and should not be confused with energy sensation practice in Qigong. All further references to energy sensation or Qi Gan in the rest of this video will be in the context of martial art training unless mentioned otherwise. In the previous two videos, I introduced the first two stages of training, Yi Xing Yan Qi, or use the body to attract the Qi, and Yi Xing Dai Qi, or use the Qi to lead the body. Today is the third and the final stage, Lian Shen He Qi, or train the mind and integrate the Qi. The fourth stage focuses on the concept that Movement is the priority since movement carries the sensation. So, the objective of the first step is to ensure that your physical movement is in a state suitable to managing energy circulation. Even though the energy sensation is the goal of that stage, the physical movement should be practiced in a specific way that can attract your energy flow with an energetic experience. 
The physical movement at this stage is normally in the form of a single movement exercises or short routines. The energy sensation in martial art practice differs from the similar experience gained in Qigong practice in the aspects of body strength and the speed of movements. To practice energy sensation through martial art movements. Movement should be comparatively fast and utilize body strength. Only when these two criteria are met will the energy sensation be considered martial in nature. But to start off movements can be slower and the body strength can be less in order to build up the sensation. The second stage focuses on the concept that the energy sensation is the priority since at that stage, the objective is to use the sensation to guide your physical movement. In other words, it is a practice in which physical movements follow or chase the energy sensation. Energy sensation comes first and the physical movement follows the sensation so that the sensation and the movement happen almost simultaneously but the energy sensation leads the body or yi qi dai xing. So, compared to the first stage, the second stage is a much more advanced practice which takes a lot of effort to master. Very often, people think that energy sensation should occur along with physical movement. However, to train in the second stage, the practice has to shift from a physical movement focused approach to an energy sensation focused approach in order to improve the level of managing of energy practice. It is worth noting that the energy sensation still follows the same path as that of a single movement or a small routine. It is not a practice in which a practitioner randomly works on a routine or movement without following a fixed path of a form. It seems as if an energy body is working on a movement and the physical body is following the energy body's path. So, the first two stages follow a specific training sequence, shifting priority from a physical movement to energy sensation but in separate ways, one following the other. By doing so, the quality of energy sensation improves so that a practitioner can manage it using their mind through training, which is the foundation for the upcoming third stage, the stage to train the mind and integrate the qi. Now, let's move on to the next section in which I will explain the final stage of the three-stage energy practice method. Topic 2. How to practice Lian Shen He Qi I will provide a more detailed explanation of this stage in the context of the three internal styles of martial art later in this chapter. But first, let me explain the term Lian Shen He Qi word by word. Lian means to train, practice. Shen means spirit, mind. In martial art practice, we cannot train our spirit directly, so a better direct translation of a Shen here is mind, while the final implication of a Shen is spirit. He means integrated with, coordinate with. Qi means energy. Put together, Lian Shen He Qi means that in the third stage, a practitioner should train the mind to integrate with the energy as one. 
It is a state in which our intention, mental focus, or mental work integrates with energy as one. In other words, there is no differentiation between movement, mind, and energy sensation, and all of these aspects unifies as one in training. In the first two stages, we focused on the relationship between two key factors in the practice, physical movement and the energy sensation. However, in the third stage, another factor also becomes important, the mind. Pay attention here. Even though the word mind is not mentioned in the first two stages, both stages actively involve mental work regardless. Without intentionally working with the mind, the energy sensation and the physical movement should be in a random way, which goes against the purpose of the first two stages. However, in the third stage, even though I specifically use the word mind, in practice, what the mind does in that stage is just a passive observation instead of an active focus. I use the word spirit instead of the word mind in that step since the function of the spirit compared to the word mind is more about a passive way of working with physical movement. That is the key difference between the first two stages and the third stage in terms of the usage of the mind. We train our mind to function as the spirit by passively observing the unifying energy experience in managing energy sensation and physical movements in martial art practice. This is a very advanced practice and takes much more proactive effort to achieve the expected results. Before introducing how to practice the third stage specifically in the three styles of internal martial arts, let me elaborate on the overall practice principle of that stage. First, Pay attention to the word observation. I'm using the word observation here in order to express the meaning of a passive way in training. To do so, the mind should focus on the comprehensive image of the whole body and observe and sense the energy sensation, physical movements in an integrated way by using different levels of speed and the body strength of a single movement or a small routine. Also, some other key practices such as Kai He or the opening and closing of energy movements can be applied here. However, bear in mind that this practice is based on energy movement not only physical movement. Check out my video titled Internal Style Concept 23, Kai He, Opening and Closing. Link is in the description. That video introduced the key concept and the practice of Kai He at both physical and energy levels. Of course, other practices based on many key concepts introduced in this series can be applied as well, but Kai He is one of the most important practices in the third stage of Qi Gan training. Furthermore, visualizing the martial application when working on physical movements is an effective way to practice the third stage. However, the mental focus involved should be less intense 
compared to an actual martial application oriented practice. At that stage, for this purpose, this visualization helps the mind to move the energy in the body, helping to integrate together different aspects of the energy practice method as one. So, differentiating the energy sensation oriented practice from the pure martial application oriented practice is a key factor here. Now, let me use one movement, each of Xing Yi, Tai Chi, and Ba Gua to illustrate this stage further. First, Xing Yi. Let's take the last movement of the Zuan Quan or the Water Fist as an example. Here, the fist extends upward and forward, the other hand moves backward and downward, the front foot steps downward, and the back leg steps forward. When practicing this movement, focus on the whole body, especially the arms, legs, and the hips and the waist rotation. Imagine the whole body's energy expands and then returns to the lower dentin area. The speed, the intensity of the body structure, and the energy sensation should unify together in this movement. Next, Tai Chi. Let's take the left side pushing movement of the single whip as an example. When the left hand pushes to the forward left, and the right hands maintain the hooking posture. The energy of the whole body should have an expanding sensation, and the practitioner should sense the energy moving from the center of the body towards the hands and the feet. After this movement gets done, the energy sensation will move back to the body center from the arms and the legs. So, Focus on the whole body, but sense the energy sensation moving along the body, arms, and legs. Finally, Ba Gua. Let's take Qing Long Fan Shen or Black Dragon Turn the Body movement, and as the example. When the arms extend backward and the body turns to the same direction, focus on the whole body especially the extended arms. At the same time, energy sensation moves from the body center to the arms and hands. After this movement is done, the energy sensation moves back to the center of the body. Pay attention to the whole body instead of only the arms and the hands. Strengthen the mental focus while the arms and the hands extend outward and backward in order to strengthen the energy sensation. That is the basic practice of Lian Shen He Qi, the third and the final stage of Qi Gan in Xing Yi, Tai Chi, and Ba Gua. As in the previous two videos for the first two stages, I have only used one movement of each style to explain the basic practice. Bear in mind that you can apply this method in other movements of each style. Now, let's better understand the three stage energy practice method by looking at some key principles in the next topic. Topic 3 Important principles of the Three stage energy practice method. After introducing the three steps for working on energy sensation in martial art training, especially their training examples in Xing Yi, Tai Chi, and Ba Gua, you should have a basic idea about this method. Again, I created this method to help practitioners get an idea of how to work and what to expect in training, or else the concept would have largely remained at a theoretical level without any tangible solution 
to work with. Having said that, you need to use this solution in your own practice, or else it will stay theoretical to you. To take your understanding further, I'd like to introduce three key principles. This will not only help you know the practice better, but will also help you understand what to pay attention to in order to practice it correctly. Any practice that is not guided by necessary principles will most likely cause unnecessary mistakes. So, let's look at three important principles for qi gan practice. First, xun xu jian jin, or work on it step by step. It is very important to keep in mind to follow all the three stages in an organized way. Any intent to skip a stage will definitely result in failure. I have taught some people this method, and only those who strictly followed the three-stage method have achieved the expected result. Our mind is no different from the other body parts in terms of the learning process. In that, training our mind in managing energy practice takes time, effort, and the proper procedure. The mind is not as tangible as other physical body parts, and it is very hard to evaluate its progress in training. So, following the three-stage method in order by seeing each stage to completion and not skipping any stage is important. By the way, I'd like to point out a fact that most community members have never experienced any energy sensation when training in martial arts. Speaking from personal teaching experience, there are mainly two reasons. First, many people have never heard about this practice to begin with, and two, incorrect training method. After watching these three videos, I believe most of you have already understood what it is and how to practice it. So, what you need to do now is to work on it using the step-by-step -step approach. Keep at it. I'm sure you will get there. Second, yi nian wei xian, xin qi xiang yi, or pay attention to the mind is the priority. Mind and energy follow each other mutually. In last week's video on the second stage, I had mentioned that the mind is the bridge between energy sensation and the physical movement, and it is more important to pay attention to the mind in the beginning. Here, the concept of pay attention to the mind is a bit abstract. The important aspect here is the function of the mind. The mental activity should be neither too intense nor too casual in the beginning. So, practitioners have to find a suitable level of mental focus by themselves. It is very important to remember that there are three elements, physical movement, energy sensation, and mental focus. The overall practice is to integrate these three elements as one in order to mutually strengthen them in the long run. So, being able to differentiate between them but also being able to integrate them as one are equally important to reach a higher level in this practice. In the traditional Chinese internal practice, Qi or energy is used to describe both physical and energy levels of practice. So here, Qi means both physical movement and energy sensation. The second part of this principle is Xin Qi Xiang Yi, or mind and energy follow each other mutually. 
I used this term to express the importance of the mind and the energy that a term means both movement and sensation. Both of them should work as one eventually. 3. 整体为主 Oh, the wholeness is the key factor in practice. 整体, the first two words of this term, is the concept of a wholeness, which includes the whole physical body and the whole energy body. Energy body is a term that I used to express the energy sensation created by the physical body that exists apart from the physical body. So, the whole physical body and the whole energy body together consist the whole body which is the meaning of the word wholeness or zhangti. In practice, practitioners have to focus on the wholeness instead of the local area in terms of both movement and sensation. This principle is especially important in the third stage. However, this is not that easy to put into practice even though Practitioners understand the importance of the wholeness. So, an effective solution for this is the first principle itself. Follow the specific steps in order. Those were three important principles for the three stage qi gan practice. Understanding these principles and applying them into your practice will greatly accelerate your progress. So, are there any misperceptions of the third stage? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 4. Misperception As mentioned earlier, qi gan practice in martial arts training is not a popular topic in the community. The third stage is an even more rarely discussed topic both in China and overseas. Regardless, misperceptions related to energy sensation are not rare. For example, some people claim that since the mind is a critical aspect, so in practice we can only practice the mind instead of working on physical movement in martial arts training. This is a mistake, let me debunk it. The key issue here whether focusing on mental practice is sufficient by itself. Before answering this question, we have to know that we are talking about energy sensation practice in martial art training, not meditation or qigong at all. Any martial art training, no matter a form or a stance, is physical movement either static or dynamic in approach. Without the physical aspect involved in training, only mental visualization and imagination are far from enough. So, please work on both energy and physical aspects in energy sensation practice, especially for the third stage. Without the right method, any practice based on misperception will end up in speculation. Now, let's move on to the next section where I will demonstrate a bagua exercise to illustrate the third stage of qi gan practice. Topic 5. Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate a bagua movement by using the third stage approach. The name of this movement is Ning Shen Gai Zhang, twist the body and strike downward. Okay, slow motion first. Now, fast a little bit.
Topic 6 Takeaways First, review of the first two stages. Separation of energy sensation and physical movements practice is the solution to build both qi gan skills. Topic 2 How to practice Lian Shen He Qi. Focus both on energy sensation and physical movement in a comprehensive and integrated way with the right level of mental focus is a good starting point. <coughs> Third, important principles of the three stage energy practice method. First, Xun Xu Jian Jin or work on it step by step. Second, Yi Nian Wei Xin, Xin Qi Xiang Yi, or paying attention to the mind is the priority. Mind and energy follow each other mutually. 3. Zhang Ti Wei Zhu, or the wholeness is the key factor in practice. 4. Misperception. Some people claim that since the mind is a critical aspect, so in practice, we can only practice the mind instead of working on physical movement in martial art training. That is a misperception. You need to work on both energy and physical aspects in energy sensation practice, especially for the third stage. Make sure to check out the demonstration section to get a better idea of how to practice Lian Shen He Qi in your martial art practice. That brings us to the end of today's video. Quick reminder to send me your questions for next week's Q&A. Thank you for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.